Hey everybody, Martin here for CGBoost.com and in this short video, part of my new Master 3D Environments in Blender course, we'll have a look at how you can very quickly make several weather effects using just three variations of the same particle setup. With that, you'll be able to spice up any of your environment renders by adding a cool layer of detail over it. Sounds good? So let's get to it! Okay, first we will tackle the snow simulation and in my teaser for environment course I put it into two shots, this mountain shot and also the final title reveal. It all starts with a plane, at least uh, generally in my workflows. So even this particle setup I'll put on a single plane leaving it to emitter and for now have the number at 1000. Let's figure out the velocity and simulation first. If you'll hit spacebar, you'll see what it's doing. It sort of jumps up and then falls rapidly to the ground. Not very snow-like. So to get rid of this initial jump, just go to velocity and change the normal velocity to zero. That takes care of that, but at the same time, you can make randomized value higher to add a bit more chaos to the emission. By the way, since the simulation resets once you hit the first frame of the timeline, you can remember this super handy shortcut shift and left arrow to get to it quickly. This one literally changed my life, uh, or at least that part of my life that I spend in Blender, which is most of my life these days, so yeah. Okay, next, this now looks like falling tennis balls, so go down here, open up the field weights and adjust the gravity to something like 0.05. I know, I know, this is not the most scientific approach, messing around with gravity, but let's do it anyway. I found it the fastest way to achieve the results I wanted. Now it gives us this sort of movement, much more snowy. But we need to increase the particle life in order for it to not disappear so soon. Do it here, and in fact, you can even set a negative frame start to already have the particles in the scene when you reset it. Negative 200 here, and the end frame of your timeline here, in my case 250. And that's going to be okay. Good, now let's open up the render menu and before we forget, let's uncheck this show emitter here to not have it visible later in our renders. Next you can see that the render as option we have set to halo, which is just a test object, not much you can do with it. So let's very quickly make an icosphere. You can even leave it at a default settings. Only right click and make the shading smooth. In the edit mode, deform it around a little. Doesn't really matter how, just make it roughly spherical. Add two more variations, that will be about okay. And put all of them onto a separate collection. Call it flakes um, or snow, just so you later know what's in it. Put it somewhere away from the camera view and get back to the particle setup. Here just switch this option for it to render a collection and choose the flakes down here. Adjust their size, something like 0.2 worked for me and even adjust the scale randomness to 0.8. You can also scale the plane at any time, it will not change the look of your particles, only adjust the emission area. Ok, two more things remain, making the simulation a bit more interesting and also adding some shader to the flakes. So first push the emitter somewhere to the side, for example here. Now of course it's still doing its thing, just falling. Uh, but now if we add a wind field here, rotate it and increase the strength to about 1.5. Well, yeah, now it's flying, but it's still boring. But watch this. We also have this turbulent field and if you add it, put it here and set the strength to about 6 and size to 1, it will give you this. And that's our snow. The bigger the number in this size value, the larger you make the pattern of the turbulence, so the particle trails will deform along larger curves. The smaller it is, the more jittered the motion gets. Yeah, I would really love for the developers to finally add a way to visualize these fields in the viewport. Unless it's already there and I don't know about it. So let me know people if you know something I don't. Let's use the value of 1 in the size for now. 
Okay, there is a ridiculously easy way to add a good looking EV snow shader. You just find this real snow add on in your preferences or download it here and then activate it. Then just select one of your snowflakes and click add snow here in this shelf menu. This add on is actually made for the purpose of adding snow caps onto your objects, but that's not what we need right now. It also gives you this shader and it is awesome and easily adjustable, so definitely use it. Copy it to the other flakes with Ctrl L and make material links and here we go. Of course at this point you can make the background transparent or even add this built in Nishita sky to get a bit more lighting. Alright if you now turn on the motion blur here and also bake our simulation. We can now do a quick test render and this is looking pretty nice. And if the motion blur doesn't seem to be enough for you, you can always go here and increase the shutter. That will give you this result. I like it. And from this point on, you have a great opportunity to experiment. You can mess around with the simulation, adding more snow particles in the number here, or adjusting these two fields. For example, just by making them more intense, you create a snowstorm. In fact, watch this. It is now very, very easy to make a sandstorm from this just by adding simple children to it. Five of them will be fine and to increase their spacing, set this radius to about 0.4. With a turbulence strength of 60 and wind of 30, I got this result. You can even crank up the number of particles real high, like 20,000 and go higher with the size of your turbulence field and that gives you this result. Only make sure to rebake every time you want your simulation to update. Another neat thing is you can just move the turbulence field to create an entirely different turbulent effect. For this simulation though, for sand, I actually made my particles smaller though because sand is usually smaller in size than snow. And if you now just change a few colors here in the snow shader, you'll be able to stick it to any dusty desert footage and call it a sandstorm. Of course, it gets pretty slow at this point, especially with this number of particles, but you can always rebake everything and it will move slightly faster. Also for these very fast moving particles, I recommend going lower with the shutter and also increasing the steps here to make the motion blur look better. Another variation we can make from this is a very simple rain. Here I just deformed and subdivided a cube and used it for a drop like shape for the source particles instead of our flakes. Just again make a few of them and put them on a separate collection called drops. I also made a very simple material for it combining this glossy BSDF with transparent BSDF mixing at about 0.5 and on top I added an emission shader. That one I mixed in with Fresnel node so it shines only on the sides. I had to add a math multiply node though to make it less intense. Finally I activated a bloom option in the EV rendering menu to really make it shine. The differences in simulation were few. Mostly I added to the gravity weight so it falls faster to the ground. Also I unchecked the object rotation option here to instead drive the rotation by the velocity or the direction they fall. I removed the randomized value from the velocity tab and then made the normal velocity negative 1 so it's emitting in the negative direction of this plane's normal. Or you can just rotate the plane and then make the value 1. For this my wind and turbulence fields remained with a lower intensity but I duplicated them because I made a bigger rain emitter and I wanted more randomization to the simulation. 
If you find that the number of motion blur steps is slowing down your renders, you can definitely lower it or just switch to cycles and GPU rendering. It might actually be faster. All right, my friends, I hope you like this very fast three way result to one simple setup. With a bit of compositing, you'll be able to add these types of weather effects into any of your environment shots. And if by any chance you want to learn how to make these environments, uh, well, you know, I have a new course on that topic. It is in early access with a big early access discount. So uh, the link is below. Okay, see you next time. Martin out.